have one question about that 530, Carolyn. Okay. Um, when you, yeah. You want to ask Tell that me now when or? it's appropriate. Okay. Well, when uh, Elizabeth opens the hearing, then we can okay. do it. So after okay. public comment and then when okay. she opens the hearing. Well, okay. yeah. So let's get started unless, unless it needs to come before the public comments, but no, it not, doesn't. We can, okay. Nope. All right. So let's get started. Um, this mm -hmm. is a meeting of the Northampton Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, we have published this meeting on April 28th and May 5th. And August 25th and September 1st. <laughs> Yes, of course. Uh, right. Shoot me. I I know we've been here. Yeah, it's, a, it's an old April Fool's joke. I was just I, bringing it back around. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and uh, you know, I thought I was being so record. clever to actually print this out, so I had it in front of me. So apologies. Um, what were the two dates? August twenty fifth and September first. Thank you. Um, and it's a meeting ID. I assume this is right. Nine three five one two zero seven one zero eight four. Mm -hmm. Is that right? No, that's just um, no, no, that's, that's the, the link. Yeah, okay. you don't want to read that out. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Okay. Um, and let's see. We uh I can introduce all of you later, but why don't we just do the public hearing now if there's anybody here um to open for public comments? Is there anybody in the waiting room, Carolyn? Uh no one except for the applicant for the 530 matter, 535 matter. Okay. All right. So um if there's no public comment, then why don't we proceed with the 530 hearing, which is a site plan amendment to extend the time to substantially start a permit by Northampton Area Pediatrics, 193 Locust Street, map ID 23B-11. So this is just to extend, Carolyn, you wanna explain? Sure. So the Northampton Area Pediatrics had to come before the Zoning Board and the Planning Board for modifications to the site um, to add parking and also do a little bump out. And it was a pre-existing non-conforming site. Um, they just haven't been able to um, figure out construction timeline. And because of COVID, it extended it. And now they're not sure when they're going to start, but they, the end of their, uh, they need to just substantially start the project by February, I think of 2023, they know they're not going to, so they just want to go ahead and get um, set, reset the date. So it'll start a new three year window um, if the zoning board, you know, grants this amendment um, for them to do the work. And it's purely just to allow them more time to start the project. Does anyone have And questions? I will also say, sorry, I will also say no zoning amendments have happened between the time they applied and today. So it's not as though, um, you know, the city from a policy perspective was trying to alter the, the, the allowed uses in that location. So none of the regulatory structure has been um, up changed in that interim time, intervening time. You read my mind. <laughs> Does anyone have any other questions for Carolyn? I do. Yep. Um, so I don't know if it's just changed in terms of the um, city website's infrastructure, but I want to make sure since it's been four years since um, with this was first filed, it was 2018, that the abutters were notified because there's a chance abutters have changed. Right, so I just want to make sure abutters mm -hmm. were newly notified of this change. Um, yes, because the um, this triggered a public hearing. So for every public hearing, um, there's a posting in the Gazette and notice to abutters. So for both the planning board and the zoning board amendment. So meaning, Carolyn, they still got those postcards in the mail. Correct. And they had okay. to post the yellow sign um, at the street. Mm -hmm. And I saw that. So okay. my only question was that I used to see those postcards on the uh, whatever the permits page, and I couldn't see it there this time. So I wondered if something had changed. So I just wasn't looking in the right place, or maybe it had not happened. Um, that would be my fault. It's still in my out box <laughs> that I have to transfer to okay. the website, but okay. yes, they went out. So yes, it is important to me with that four year time span 
that abutters, particularly since there might be new homeowners, new property owners would have the opportunity because some of it didn't, you know, involve setback, um, would have the opportunity to be informed of the change. Yeah. Okay. And, and on that note, the side in which this particular expansion was taking place is um, the uh, property ownership was on the cusp of changing at the time. And the new property owner is well aware of the modifications and um, actually had been working with right. the Northampton Area Pediatrics to um, coordinate site work because that property owner was intending to make changes to his property as well. Great. And that's what would have been the uh, lawnmower place and now it's something else? Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was my only question. Any other questions? Nope. Motion to close the hearing. Um, I just want to add that I uh, I looked over looked over the plan again and saw. Uh, I would have said it was two years ago, but uh, <laughs> I know. It's, um, uh, yeah, I saw I saw nothing to be concerned about. So I um, make a motion to close the public hearing. There's a second. Maureen, Maureen, why don't you do this? I'll second. All right. Is that what you're saying, Bob? Sure, I'll yep. second. Uh, roll call, Carolyn. Um, Sarah Northrup. Yes. Maureen Scanlon. Yes. And Elizabeth Silver. Yes. And now we need a motion on the application. I'll move that we approve the uh, application to extend time to substantially start a permit by Northampton Area Pediatrics as proposed. Okay, second. Sure, second. Okay. Carolyn. Uh, Sarah Northrup. Yes. Vote. Maureen Scanlon. Yes. And Elizabeth Silver. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank that you. Was unanimous. Good. Okay. Um, moving on to the 535 hearing. Uh, we do have the applicant's representative here. This is a request for a special permit for a larger sign for Cooley Dickinson, uh, map ID 23B 46. So, um, <coughs> uh, Mr. Auerbach, you're here representing the um, hospital. Hello, can you hear me? He seems frozen, actually. Hey, Harry. Yeah. Um, uh, let me see if I can send a message. He's got to figure it out by now. He probably yeah. thinks we're, we're all frozen. Oh, there he is. Okay. Okay, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, uh, no, you froze. You froze there on us for a minute. Yeah, and as as you, you did as well, and I'm like, okay, it's probably on my end. So uh, I'll start from, start from <laughs> yeah. the beginning. Yeah, yeah. My name is yeah. Harry Auerbach. I'm with Agnoli Sign 732, um, 722 Worthington Street in Springfield, Mass. Uh, presenting on behalf of Cooley Dickinson, which, as you, you probably all know is part of uh, Massachusetts General Brigham, M MGB. Uh, and uh, the request is uh, for uh, some new signage. Uh, it, there's actually, uh, we have put, put forward uh, per, a permit request to John Flagg and this one was denied because it is a second uh, secondary or second uh, sign on the, on the building itself, a second set of channel letters. So uh, because there's already a set that he approved that faces Locust Street, um, he requested that I, or that we, we come before the ZBA for a special permit. Okay, so do you wanna tell us a little bit about the sign? Certainly. Um, the new sign is our, what we call channel letters. So uh, light is emitted out the front of the letter. Um, that, uh, if I, uh, Carolyn, did, did we, uh, does, does the ZBA have a copy of the design itself or, or 
or yes so yeah. and also if you want to share your screen you can otherwise i was going to go and i can pull this up on my screen if you can't pull it up on your screen but i gave you co-host uh, uh and i i'm if you could that would be wonderful uh, okay that would be very helpful so okay so hang on just a second i'll screen mm -hmm. share this uh Okay, can you see that? Does everybody see the? Yeah, yes. there we go. Yeah. Okay, so okay. these are, yeah, thank you, Carolyn. Um, these are channel letters, and the same set of channel letters are on the side that faces or parallel to Locust Street. Um, and when, when we, in the sign industry, when we say channel letters, there are backlit or frontlit. This is frontlit, so light will come out um, the front of the letters, if you will. There is, uh, an acrylic face. Uh, it is white. You can see the logo. Um, they're inter uh, internally lit. Um, so it, this view is the same that faces Locust Street. So two sets of channel letters. What do you mean, Harry? I'm sorry. Two sets, meaning what is the set we're not seeing okay. right now? The one on Locust Street, which was approved by John Flagg. Um, Carolyn, correct me if I'm wrong, that we're allowed to have one set of letters and because they want two sets of letters um, with the, yes. the same message we, we were required. Okay. So you were replacing an existing Cooley Dickinson Hospital channel lettering with one that's Mass General Brigham and uh, Cooley Dickinson as sort of the sub brand now. That is so correct. So the, the sign matches the same on perpendicular walls. Correct. Okay. Thank you, Maureen. That was but this one's totally well new, right? This one is totally yeah. the new. Okay. There and, was no sign there previously. And what's yeah. the size of this one? Because I don't think it was on the application. Um, bear with me. So the logo, the height of the logo is 48 inches. Uh, the, the height of the M uh, or the, the capitals are 21 inches. And uh, Cooley the capitals in Cooley, Dickinson, and Hospital, CDH, are 13 inches. Okay, but that doesn't give us the square footage of the sign. Uh, square footage, bear with me, and I can tell you from John's, you know, what we submitted to John. The, the one that's being replaced, the Cooley Dickinson Hospital, there's the square footage is 115 15 feet, square feet, if you will. So it is a four by 28 foot, eight inch sign, four feet tall, 28 feet, eight inches in length, if you will, 115 square feet. And then, so Carolyn, can you remind us what is out of variance that uh, brings us to the table? Yes, yeah, so there are sort of two ways to look at this. So if the second sign, if these are identical, then the, then this would be 115 square feet on, uh, you know, it, it would be um, either a larger than, I mean, it would be two things. One is a second sort of, front wall sign because of the building orientation sort of faces two directions along the street right. um or you could call this a side wall sign and then the variation between what the minimum size is is 25 square feet up to 115 square feet um so it you, you know it's either two front wall you're adding a second front wall sign or you're asking or they're asking for a larger sign than um, would be allowed as a sidewall sign but the standard for review is the same it's a special permit and the review would be relative to there's the orientation the size, the setback of the building is such that it warrants um, a sign that's larger or more signs than is allowed by right. Got it. Yeah. 
Any <clears throat> other questions? This is nothing to do with um, Agnoli's role in this, but in driving by today, I saw that the site you're placing that sign in, it has very limited visibility because of a big oak tree and a big maple tree. Um, and like any thoughts on, is, is that the best place to put that sign? I'm just thinking, like, I think this is really important to Cooley to introduce the, like if you're introducing Mass General Brigham and Cooley gets sort of second stage how you present that is really important. And I wanna support our hospital as best we can, but I wanna make sure people will see it. <laughs> and <laughs> good point. Morning. Yeah, you bring up a good point. Um, this was presented to, you know, by um, the, there's a company DCL that has actually designed it. And um, I, I think where it is most noticeable is when you are at the light and um you see both walls very well uh you know in terms of uh, another location uh, you know that that i would have to go back to that's not right. that's not my my control right. Uh, right you might start addressing that by street signage by navigational signage and and again good point yeah. we, we have um there is directional signage that's being replaced with mgb directional signage um so um, yeah. okay again way beyond our jurisdiction but i want to support the hospital as best as possible yeah, yeah. So that's Thank sort you. of the view from the signal where you can see the ground sign here in both corner so that um i guess during the winter there won't be a problem since this is a deciduous yeah. tree <laughs> Most definitely, yeah, most definitely. And Ma Maureen, to your point, if you, you know, uh, we're with Carolyn's yeah. picture, I think the only other opportunity would be to the left of the north entrance, but it's so far deep in, it, yeah. it, it would carry yeah. the weight. So, um, yeah. yeah. All right. I'm just thinking it through right now as yeah, I drove no. by today. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you bring up good points. I was, I was approaching from <clears throat> prospect that cr kind of crazy intersection you know which is a very traversed you know well traveled intersection and you don't see it from there this is a, but but you're right the hospital is positioned in a way that there's no one primary approach no, well I, I think um and now I'm, I'm challenged as to the the name of the street as we drive up um okay i'm sorry Locust. Locust. Locust Street. Thank you. I, should, Great. I, I, Great. I think Great. Locust Street is nice, Bob. Yeah. Help me out. Uh, Locust Street is obviously the primary. And I drive up when I come off the highway, I, I always come up Prospect Street and mm -hmm. it dumps me right in front. So you will see the sign that's parallel to Locust. So, um, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. I think this is the best of what they, you know, what's available. Yeah. To the point of what is our uh, jurisdiction, this um, application is because of what well, well, the building mm -hmm. inspectors note is that it appears to be 114 <clears throat> square feet, uh, whereas the limit was 100. Um, so was there discussion of decreasing the sign by a percent, a percentage? Right to get it down to 100 square feet? Uh, no, there was not that direction because I think the, the tact that our approach was, it's a secondary sign that is mimicking the other sign. We, we had a similar situation um, three years ago or two years ago with a with a, an, another, another building on King Street that, you know, again, an exact same side A equaled side B. Um, and, Again, I think as Carolyn presented to us, we're here for, you know, we can be here for two reasons. Either it's too big or it's a second, it's a second sign. Am I saying that correctly, Carolyn? Mm -hmm. That's true. Right. Yep. So I, 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 and again, I think to Maureen's point, if you, re, you know, you, uh, we're only reducing by five square feet, but as you reduce, you reduce the, the visibility. So they, you know, and they want parity or, you know, uh, side A versus side B. So. 
Um, and again, I'm 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 <laughs> I'm going or presenting based on it's a second sign on a building. But that that's kind of the, what I I had based this or basing this request on, as opposed to square footage. That, that said, Harry, it will be similar in size to what's on the <clears throat> corner facing wall, right? It's exactly the same size, 150 okay. square feet. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But to um, uh, to Sarah's re, you know question, could we go down five square feet um, rather than lose the you know that that square footage? If it falls under, you, you know, you need special permit to have a second sign. I, I'd rather pursue it that way. Yeah. Understood. My uh, my next concern is about the our. Uh, uh, general slow creep of um, excess light pollution. Of course, this is a very important facility. Um, everybody needs to be able to find it. Um, not that they particularly, well, I don't know that anybody has trouble finding it actually, but um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a fair request. And I also am concerned that we don't we don't need it to be as bright as parking lot lighting or, you know what I mean? Often we have, yeah. we have well, some, it doesn't, it doesn't really take as much to, to be really, really visible, quite clearly visible at night. Um, and I've, I've seen a lot of things a lot brighter than they need to be. And it becomes and it, mm. uh, a glare problem. Well, it, again, Sarah, very fair, fair comment. Um, we use LEDs. And the LEDs are behind an acrylic face that really diffuses the light, so it, it really cuts it down. It's it's not like I understand and, that. Yeah, it's it's not like a, a parking light. That's not the word. I mean, that's not the way I want to say it. Right. I, yeah, I understand. Yeah, the, the those are, LEDs and the diffusion of the uh, white. I suppose it's acrylic face. Right. Where to your point, the the lights in parking lots, you can see those LEDs. I mean, they are bright. Mm -hmm. This this will not be as bright, and um, you know, I, I I know it won't be an issue. Um, case in point, but of course, that, if it is, someone will bring it up. So, someone will bring it up, and you know, we you know we could tone it down. In which case, it would make sense that the actual fixture LED. Uh, uh, I don't know if they call it a ballast or what, but uh, would be potentially dimmable in case that bridge comes up. Yeah, you're using the you're using the perfect word dimmable. We we did a project on uh, oh one five five Pleasant uh, Street, right, and uh, <laughs> those were dimmable because of the. Is are very bright and we, we put a dimmer in it, but I, I don't think this is going to be, this should not be an issue. So this is a 24 seven light. Uh, if allowed, yes, it should be. I mean, especially because it's a, it's the hospital. Um, I don't know if there are going to be any restrictions, but, um, you know, during the day, it, the LEDs are on, but you, you know, you wouldn't know it obviously at dusk through dawn. It would be it would be illuminated. Any well, other given questions? The nature, given the nature of the facility, I think that's appropriate. Yeah, I mean, we still have the opportunity to discuss amongst ourselves on the. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Meeting. This is yeah. just any questions while we still have the hearing open. I don't have any further questions. Okay. I have no questions. Okay. Sarah, you okay? All right, yes. um, Mr. Auerbach, is there anything else you wanted to add or we're gonna close no. the public hearing and then it will just uh, be those of us on the board that can discuss this. Uh, I guess the, uh, the only, you know, I mean, first of all, thank you for letting me present. Hopefully I've answered your questions uh, sufficiently. Um, what is the next step? Uh, uh, do, do I step away, you know, close out no, the you, video? And, no, and no, 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 stay with us. It's just when we close the public hearing, the folks, those of us on the zoning board will discuss the merits and then make a motion on the on the request. So Understood. no, you're welcome to stay with us. Okay. Right. So is there a motion to close the public hearing? 
you want to do this one too, Maureen? Sure. I'll, <laughs> mo I'll move to close the public hearing. Second. Carolyn, you're it's muted. muted. <laughs> I'm trying to be polite. Sarah Northrup? Yes. Uh, Maureen Scanlon? Yes. And Elizabeth Silver? Yes. Okay. And um, discussion? Yeah, just my observation coming from the <clears throat> sort of visibility and branding perspective, which is my field, is that this is a major change for Cooley to become the sub-brand of Mass General Brigham. And um, our community's affiliation is to Cooley. So I think it's important that we retain signage that makes Cooley still very visible. So I would support this because if it went any smaller, Cooley would just be this little like mouse print, you know, and I think it needs to be really visible. No, I, mean, I really like the the way Cooley kind of campaign they had and, you know, you know, my son was born there. We all have a very strong yeah. connection to it. Yeah. I mean, maybe someday our connection will be to Mass General Brigham, but that's way off and we don't want to lose the connection we already have. So I don't want to minimize the presence of the Cooley Dickinson label brand name as we step away from that hierarchy. Yes. And I think this, uh, this submitted design, including having it come from both angles, does it really respectfully. I agree. So we're dealing with the standard of um, the additional sign would not detract from the character of the neighborhood and should, should be permitted in the public interest, right, Carolyn? And, Correct. Um, they should be granted if there are exceptional circumstances to warrant their approval um, and if all efforts are undertaken to keep additional ground signs as, well, it's not a ground sign, so never mind that. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I, I would agree with the comments that have been made so far. And given that it's only a few feet over the um, actual maximum amount, I, I don't see that as a problem either. So um, I, I throw my support also. And if we have any other comments, great. If not, we could have a motion to uh, on the application. I'll move that we approve the special permit for a larger sign, Magnolia signs for Cooley Dickinson Hospital um, as presented. Do you wanna add anything about the uh, lighting, the dimmable feature to be included? Um, hmm. Well, uh, yes, I was kind of uh, going on him saying it will be dimmable as part of the presentation, but that would be a, I think that's a, a fair, Thing to include, yes. So automatic dimming at night, is that what you're saying, Sarah? Um, well, I'm not sure the exact uh, way they want to do it. Um, I was more concerned about the overall dimmability um, in the future. Uh, in the, case of the uh, larger issue. What was that, Bob? In the future, if, if there's a problem, if someone complains, you'd want it to be dimmable rather than uh, going through some major process, right? Yes. Okay, so you just want to make sure that there are there's dimming capability. Exactly. Is that what you're, okay. Yes. Condition that there is dimming capability of the LED fixtures. Okay. Is there a second? So second. Okay. Okay. Sarah Northrup. Yes. Maureen Scanlon. Yes. And Elizabeth Silver. Yes. All right. So um, the, the request is approved. Um, so and Carolyn can fill you in on the follow up. 
from here? Yeah, I'll just, I'll, uh, um, once the decision is sent to the clerks, I'll send you a copy and I'll have the appeal deadline. Uh, for and, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, there's a calendar, 20 day calendar that allows for public response or, or objection if, if the case may appeal. be. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So, and that is calendar as opposed to, uh, you, you know, Monday through Friday. Right. And then right. after, I'm sorry. Right. And so it's calendar uh, appeal, 20 calendar days, and then you can pick up the decision from the clerk um, and record and then go back to the building department for the permit. For the permit. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, that special permit decision needs to be registered with the yes. Hampshire Hampshire, right. Hampshire, not Hamden, but Hampshire County Registry of Deeds. Correct. Got it. Okay. I remembered from two years ago. That's pretty good. <laughs> All things aside. So uh, if I may say thank you so much uh, on behalf of Cooley Dickinson, and uh, I greatly appreciate it and appreciate your comments about dim capable to be dimmed. And uh, Maureen, um, the, the comment about you know, Cooley Dickinson going away, but still being part of, you know, it, it, I agree with you in, in terms of the importance. And I, and I really believe, I'd like to believe that MGB sees that, you know, because all the signage that we're going to be doing recognizes that Cooley Dickinson is still part of, you know, MGB. And if it maybe you should get them to yeah. invert the names and put Cooley Dickinson <laughs> on top. Well, then, that has been the case, Elizabeth, for a few years. Pre approval. <laughs> the subline said a mass general affiliate, Cooley right. Dickinson Hospital. So this is their move to flip it. Right. So exactly. it's happening. It is happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's it progress. So, yeah. Anyway. So thank, so you, thank you very thank much. You. And thank if uh, may I You're depart? all set. You're all, all set. set. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very thank much. You. No relation nice to red, you. right? I'm sorry? sorry. No relation to red, right? <laughs> Well, actually, um, I used to sit on Uncle Bill's knee. Um, that would be Bill, um, Bill Russell. And the more I, the more I go, the more lies I'm telling. I actually, <laughs> I actually met Bill. I met Bill once. Um, it was in the '60s when they were playing an exhibition game at the at the Coliseum at the Big E. I don't, if, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but, but um, and my yeah. father said to me, and I regret to this day that I did what he told me. He says, you go say hello to Bill and tell him your name. So I went to say hello to Bill. And I said, my last name is Auerbach. And he looked at me. This is how I remember it. He goes, so? <laughs> 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 you know, and it's, you know, of course it's, it's halftime. He, he has no interest, you know, he, right. my understanding is he could have been, a, he was a cantankerous man anyways. Um, but it, it was Kind of devastating. <laughs> but, you know, I, don't, I don't think he really was when it came to the big issues. But it was a very talented man. No, no, no regrets. You know, but it, it is a fun story, and I can. Yeah. I, I'm never. I only get past when I used to sit on Uncle Bill's knee, and then I start feeling guilty. You know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, you never you know. It. It's a fun you story. never know. All right. Well, thank I you. Think. Good luck. Thank you all. Take care, Carolyn. Do we have any other business? I don't think um, we, no we, other we, business, but I have a quick poll. Um, oh. do you, how do you guys feel about going in person um, at uh, any point? I feel we should. I, I would favor to. it. I would favor it. Okay. You're asking for a poll. I would favor it. Yeah. Okay. I oppose. Uh, I continue to okay. oppose and think this is way too contagious to be messing around in person. I just don't know, personally. Anyone, anyone who doesn't want to be at a public, at a personal meeting can can be on Zoom yet, but um, we could have you no know, meetings, and then uh, people who didn't feel comfortable being there could still uh, be on there on Zoom. They run classes well, that way and everything. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say that what we're doing with the planning board and what we've done with Central Business Architecture is to have a Zoom component, but just for people to view and listen and not take public comment. Because if you're taking public comment from 
in the room and on Zoom, you basically are running two different meetings and it's really much more complicated um, that way. So um, what we're doing with planning board tonight, for example, is that um, people can certainly watch and listen, but if you wanna um, send comments, you either email it before or you show up for the meeting. So Carolyn, do you have any sense? It's, it's as much, if not more important, um, how that decision weighs into the public participation. So rather than, you know, what we want. Yeah. So what, what's happening with the planning board? Are you finding that people want to come to a meeting and they're more likely to participate? Um, well, we've, so what happened is they started in April or May and then in June when Omicron really sort of picked up they went back to Zoom only. Um, and then that, tonight's the first night they're going back in person. Um, but for, I can say that we've still had some uh, a variation, some people coming in person and some people just watching and observing from home, which I think provides a new opportunity that wasn't present before COVID right, right. for people to at least know what's going on and see into you know the public hearing process um of course there's always been the opportunity to email comments about any project so that's still available if people don't feel like coming in person but they have something to say um so they can still do that but i think it's too soon to really know um you know, how, what the split is in terms of how many people are, it also depends on the hearing, right? You know, sometimes there's nobody that comes for the hearing. Um, and then other times people do wanna come. So it's, I don't have enough data really to tell you. Yeah. So to me, it's all about participation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, Zoom works great for me, um, like for many reasons, but I want to make sure it's not like exclusionary to yeah. the general public. To me, it's about more than just participation. It's also about the well-being of people who are gathering together in close quarters in person. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't ignore what's going on in the pandemic. So um, it also takes a lot longer to and time and gas and carbon footprint um, to meet in person. And um, I, I would have to think seriously about continuing on the board if, if the move was to in-person meetings. I don't see any good reason to do it. Participation, I don't, I can't imagine that there's been, or, and I certainly haven't heard about anybody who hasn't been able to participate um, because of this being virtual. Um, it's possible that there are some, and we don't know about that because obviously they haven't shown up. So. Um, that is possible, but I, I think that this is as accessible as anything else. Um, so I, I want to continue doing it by Zoom. How would you feel about hybrid? I think Carolyn's right. I don't think that works so well. I think it's too complicated. So I think we need to make a decision. Bob, why are you in favor of meeting in person? Well, um... For me, it's all about ignorance, and I live in a state of bliss. I live off of Bliss Street. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, that's just, I'm just throwing that out there. I, I do the polls, you know, the, uh, uh, and people come and vote in person, and we try to be as careful as we can, and there ha hasn't really been any issue. I know this is really contagious and everything, but uh, I don't have any reason not to meet in person. That's all I'm saying. So if we met in person, would we all be wearing masks or not? I think it would be a personal choice. Yeah. If the meeting's going more than, you know, 10 minutes and we're, you know, and that's the, the thing about the democratic process. You don't know if you start off, you know, we like to be efficient. We pride ourselves in being an efficient board. Um, but sometimes there's more uh, public comment is uh, important to give people the space for that. And then you end up with, um, you know, 
a whole bunch of people with their hackles up getting each other's faces and <laughs> then it drags out. Well, I guess, thank you for all of this. I guess to me, it's more like if there's any opportunity that meeting in person would encourage more community resident involvement, then that's enough reason to consider it. Um, I like the convenience of Zoom. Here I am with my first you know, positive COVID test this morning. So I also like the safety of Zoom. I have hearing loss so I can hear much better all of the communication by Zoom. But I just, I guess my question is, are we, discouraging or missing a level of community involvement by just doing this virtually? I don't know. I mean, I, I think the issue with permit review is actually one of difficulty in communicating together on through squares on the screen. And um, so, and viewing plans and talking about those Thing. So that's what I think is difficult about the permitting um, hearings on Zoom. And, um, you know, though we've had a lot of people participate in public hearings, that it also was harder to, um, cre to maintain decorum in yeah. um, a Zoom setting. And um, so that is not helpful for the democratic process either. Um, and so there's that um, side that makes it, uh, I think, um, better to be in person um, and to have that sort of face-to-face -face communication. But, um, you know, I think it's gonna be board by board decision. And it sounds like there's not consensus and David's not here. So we, you know, we can certainly put it off until, you know, a couple more months and, um, you know, maybe this variant dies down and things chill out for a while. And, um, you know, maybe there'll be a point at which people will feel much more comfortable about that. So, you know, it wasn't intended, this conversation wasn't intended to be sort of a final discussion, but I just wanted to put it out there because, um, uh, you know, I think it's important to sort of keep that in mind that we have, um, that there are boards going back to in-person. Well, I would just point out that if we were meeting in person tonight, we wouldn't have a quorum because I would assume that Maureen and, and Sarah would stay home. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. we wouldn't That's be able true. to have met tonight. Right. Right. If it was hybrid, we could have been involved. No. Again, I think that's too complicated. So I, I think hybrid so, is too complicated also. Right. And uh, but I agree with Maureen. I think that we should move back toward uh, meeting in person at some point. But certainly there's not any agreement at this point. So. So maybe every three to six months we revisit the topic. Sounds good yeah. to me. Well, let me just uh, 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 check in. So given we are still in the public hearing uh, or meeting, excuse me, uh, and recording, um, is it okay for us to discuss this outside of the public hearing meeting? Excuse me. Um, yeah, so you know. meeting, me, meeting logistics are okay to do over email. Okay. All right, very good. All right, so um, it's on the table for now. We'll come back at some point to revisit. And there are no minutes. So uh, I think we've concluded tonight very efficiently. <laughs> Is there a motion to uh, adjourn? I make a motion we adjourn. How's that? That's great, Bob. <laughs> Thank you. Second. <laughs> All right. Sarah, have a second. Okay, um, Sarah Northrup? Yes. Bob Riddle? Yes. And Elizabeth Silver? Yes. Great. Thank you all, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. How are you? Email can you stop recording, Carolyn? And <laughs>